Okay, now in this next video is where we're going to add all of the coding, which is going to do the calculations. Now, before I proceed, I'm going to mention that this coding is in the description field. So please feel free to look at that or copy from there to help give you a little shortcut to proceed. I'm sure your survey is probably going to have more questions, the question four or five, six, you know, however many questions that you want. But I mean, having this code will give you a little shortcut on setting up the code in your own user form. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is put us in design mode. And you can just double click any ActiveX control that you have. The main thing is I want you, I want you to get into the Visual Basic Editor. And again, I'm, on, I'm in production mode. Put me in design mode, double click the one. So just the Visual Basic Editor where you have all of your coding already. I'm gonna scroll all the way to the very top and right to where it doesn't matter if yours is command button one as long as you're at the very very top just go on and hit the the home key press return that way you can add some coding up here and in programming anytime that you're calculating values I mean it's pretty much like math you need to have a variable assigned to it so what I'm gonna do is create five variables and these are global global vari variables meaning anywhere in the programming language you can make a modification to this variable so it's gonna do I'm gonna first call it out and this is this is just the way you call a variable dim and it's gonna be count of one as integer and then I'm gonna do the same thing for two three four and five I'm just gonna copy it and what these values are going to do is that it's going to count the number of ones, twos, threes, fours, and fives. Not on its own. I'm going to create a function or a procedure, you can say, that's going to look at all of the checkboxes and it's going to count each one respectively as to how many should be in one, two, three, four, and five. So now I'm going to create that procedure. After the last dim, I'm going to do sub and it's going to be calculate the score. This is just my own name that I'm creating. I mean, you could you could have your own name here. You can put, you know, you can put Alex calculate the score. Whatever whatever you want to name it. I'm going to name it calculate the score. And the very first thing that I'm going to do is set the count of 1 to 0 and the count of 2, 3, 4 and 5. It's the very first thing you want to do is give it a zero value and you gotta do it for every single one so get used to copy and paste because those two functions are gonna be your best friend so this is where the coding is gonna get a little bit trickier but I mean I'm gonna break it down for you so we said Q1A and this is why I said naming your ActiveX controls like this is very important that way it makes the programming easier if q1a dot value equals true then count of one is equal to count of one plus one so again it's, it's just like math and all this is saying is that in question one if the if the first option is selected which we know is is as being one then it's gonna say the count of one is equal to the count of one plus another one and as we know, count of one is zero, so it's this saying zero plus one is now the count of one. And we know that question two and question three also have an option A, which is again the number one. So if question one is is true, then make sure we add one to it. On question two, if the number one is selected, we want to also add that one. If question three, option one is selected, then we also want to add that. So again, this is only for the number one, the number ones. And the way I, this right here, you need to just add a single quote that puts it into a non-executable code or a comment. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing for the, the, the number twos. So I'm going to copy and paste that, but this time I'm going to put number twos. And this again, this applies for question one, two, and three. We're going to put B. So 
So if question in question one, two, and three, if the value of the second option B, which is the number two, is true, then we need to set the count of two to be the count of two plus one. Make sure you change that because if you do count of one equals count of one plus one, then you're going to get an incorrect number because you're counting the twos here. I'm going to show you the threes again slowly, and then I'm going to do four and five very quick. So this is going to be C because, again, we're still looking at both three questions, one, two, and three, and, but we're looking at option C, which is the number three. So this is going to be count of three is equal to count of three plus one for all of them. And now I'm just going to do the same thing for the fours and the fives. Just very important that you just take your time with this, though, and make sure you set them up properly. So these are these this applies to the four, which which are the D's, and the number fives are the E's, and we'll put count of five. So right now this is not doing anything on the front end. This is just doing a lot of stuff on the back end where we're counting how many ones they have selected, the twos, threes, fours, and fives. We haven't done anything to where it's gonna show up on the actual document, so that's gonna be the next part. So we know that we have a total of three questions for the user. Number of questions equals three. The only reason why I'm putting this in is because chances are I know you're gonna have a survey or a checklist that has more than three questions and I'm putting this in for the average. So that way, if, let's just say if your survey has five questions then you can change this to a five. And then you'll have to add more here where you'll have instead of it being question one two and three a you would probably have question one two three four and five a that value equals true so now what we want to do is calculate the average so I'm going to declare the average as double and all the double is it's just pretty much a number that just isn't a, an integer that way we can see the numbers after the, the decimal point. So I'll put the average equals. Now if you're not math inclined or you don't like math, you probably won't like this part. But all we're going to do is pretty much create an algebraic expression to calculate the average. So it's going to be 1 times the count of 1. plus we're going to do 2 times the count of twos and then plus we're going to do 3 times the count of 3 and then 4 times the count of 4 and I'm, all I'm doing here guys is just setting up a formula for doing an average five times the count of five. Okay, I put parentheses on the outside because doing this by itself, all we're doing is doing one times the count of ones, two times the count of twos, three times the count of three, four times the count of four, and five times the number of fives, and then adding them all together but that won't give us the average. We need to divide that by the number of questions. That right there should give us the average, but I'm gonna add an if statement because we can't divide by zero and Visual Basic will actually return a zero in, the, in this case because we have number of questions as being three. So we're not dividing by zero, but if these numbers are all zero and we divide it by three, we're gonna we're gonna get a zero value. So if that's the case, if the average does not equal to a zero, then we want to format the average to only two decimal spots because we don't want to have a really long value such as 
3.333333. We want to just have a straight, you know, just two decimals, if anything. So we're going to just format it. And this is a function in Visual Basic format, the average. And we're going to do that as number, period, number, number. You can read more about the format function if you want to learn more about this function, but all this is doing, I'm just kind of break it down for you, it's just um, getting this value, the average, and putting it into this format right here. And we're almost done, guys. The next thing that we're going to do is just change the caption to label one, which I'm going to make sure it's label one. I went to design mode, I'm in my properties, and I'm selecting this label that we set. Yeah, it's named label one. So I'm going to go back to my Visual Basic environment. Label one dot caption equals, and it's going to be I'm going to put average and the average and let's do three spaces, and then a line space, and then I'm going to put and count of one and I'm going to do the same thing for count of two three four and five and I'm just going to copy this piece so that'd be count of five so all this is doing on this line it's setting up count one two three and four and five on the label and also putting the average okay so take a deep breath one last thing to do, assuming all this code is accurate, is we want to add calculate the score after every time a checkbox is clicked. So all we're going to do is just copy this. That's all you have to do. Go down to where you have your checkboxes. After every if statement, just paste it. Paste the calculate the score after every single checkbox. That way, every time a checkbox is clicked, the system calculates the data and puts it onto your label. And I know this is a little bit tedious, but again, I'm not saying this really isn't challenging as long as you take it step by step. It just requires some patience because it does take time to build this kind of a survey or a checklist. But we're almost done. This is pretty much going to be the end of it. As long as we don't get any errors. Make sure you save your work after every time that you make, make any changes. So that way, in case you get an error, the file is automatically saved. So now I'm going to take us out of design mode, and we're going to want to try it out. That gives us the one average. And I'm also looking at these numbers to make sure they're accurate. So it's counting two twos and one one. Now it's calculating three twos. All right, everything seems to be working. Let's make sure the clear survey button works. Hit no, nothing happens. Clear survey, click yes. And as I mentioned, once when you do clear survey and you set all these to false, it looks at that as, as a click and it calls the calculate the score function, which puts all zeros across the board. Now, I really hope you enjoyed these videos. I know, again, it's a tedious process. I will have this code inside the description. But, I mean, if you have any questions, I mean, feel free to reach out to me. And I really appreciate your, your viewing. Thank you for watching.